the church, you and I, to think of ourselves as a body. Just like the human body, we are a single body with many members, with many different parts, yet we are one entity. And so we're looking at parallels between the ways we care for and strengthen our physical bodies and what that teaches us about how to care for and strengthen our church body, our life, and our witness together. Last week, we looked at diet. To be healthy in our physical bodies, we need to eat right. We need nutritious food in healthy quantities. That doesn't mean we only eat dry salad and rice cakes. It does mean we have to make choices about what we put into our bodies. And the same holds true for our corporate church body. We have to choose what we put into our body, into our life here at Kingsway. We have to nourish our individual faith lives and our life together And one of the ways we do that is through study, particularly group study, because as disciples, we are students of Jesus. That's what the word disciple literally means. We are called to learn at Jesus' feet and to walk in His footsteps, and none of us can do that fully to the best of our ability, strictly on our own. But being healthy isn't just about diet. It isn't just about what we eat. Being healthy isn't all work. We need more than good food to be healthy. We also need rest. In the February 16, 2017 issue of Time magazine, Alice Park reported on findings from recent neurological studies linking sleep and health. Here's a short excerpt of what she wrote. Scientists are learning that shortchanging sleep can compromise nearly every major body system, from the brain to the heart to the immune system, making our inability or unwillingness to sleep enough one of the unhealthiest things that we do. I used to suggest that sleep is the third pillar of good health, along with diet and exercise, says Matthew Walker, a professor of neuroscience and psychology at the University of California, Berkeley. But I don't agree with that anymore. Sleep is the single most effective thing you can do to reset your brain and your body for good health. Hear that? If we can only make one choice to be healthier, to live better, just do one thing, we should choose to get more sleep. We should choose to get more quality rest above anything else because quality rest is that good for us. And even if we're still probing the particulars... Deep down, we've known that for a long time. When we sleep, when we sleep well, we feel good, don't we? A couple of Christmases ago, Kristen and I went off to Stratford, just the two of us, while my in-laws stayed with the girls. And on that trip, we did not set an alarm for three days. We went to bed when we were tired, and we got up when we woke up. And I'm telling you, I felt so good when we got back. Just for doing that three days in a row, it was amazing. So why don't we get more sleep? Why don't we get more quality rest when we know it's that good for us? Well, in a word, life. It was easy to follow that alarm clockless pattern when we had no kids and no dogs to care for, when we didn't have any work to contend with. We have a lot of responsibilities day to day, week to week. We're involved in a lot of things. Our to-do lists at times seem endless. 
We also live in an age where technology defies the natural rhythms of day and night. We've created artificial lights that enable us to see as clear as day in the middle of the night and thus enable us to keep going when earlier generations would have had to stop or at the very least slow down a bit. We have computers that travel in our pockets wherever we go that keep us connected to our inboxes and our timelines and our news feeds and our playlists and our watch lists 24-7, an endless flow of information and entertainment. We could even make phone calls on these things. It's amazing. We can do things faster and we can travel further and with greater ease than any human beings have ever been able to do in the history of the world. We can go and go and go as fast as we can, as far as we can, because we can. Either because we want to or because we feel pressure to. I mean, we can't let the competition get ahead. We've got to keep up. We've got to make our mark. We don't want to fall behind. The problem is we're not designed to go and go and go and go. We're not machines, even if we are designing computers these days that are wearable, even implantable. Even if there is a Starbucks on almost every corner, even if there are 10 varieties of energy drinks in every corner store, when we go and go and go, we wear ourselves down and we stress ourselves out. We are literally running ourselves into the ground, ashes to ashes and dust to dust which is why sleep, which is why quality rest is so very important and so very good for us. It is so important, in fact, that one of the first things that God not only commanded humankind, but modeled for humankind was to take rest. God took a day off after six days of creating, whatever span of time that actually was. But Genesis tells us that after God worked to create the world and all that is, God took a break. And later, through Moses, God instructed God's people to do the same, not just as a way to distinguish themselves as God's people, but because it was and continues to be good for us. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it as holy. One Bible scholar has called this commandment to observe the Sabbath the world's first human rights legislation. Because it's good for us, all of us, to take a break. We need it. We need it to be healthy. It's also very important for us to note here in Exodus, that God's instruction about the Sabbath is a gift for everyone, not just the pious people of God. Adults, children, slaves, strangers, foreigners, even livestock, even the animals who worked alongside God's people we're to be given a break. Everyone is supposed to get a break because everyone should have a break. In God's eyes, leisure, rest, quality rest isn't just a perk for the affluent and the privileged. It's a gift for all because we are all made in God's image. 
And we should see Sabbath that way. We should see this command. We should see this instruction, this urge as a gift. Jesus later declared, come unto me and I will give you rest. It's a gift. But sadly, that's not how Sabbath has been viewed or interpreted in recent history. Some of you may remember a time when stores, even gas stations, were closed on Sunday. Pretty much everything was closed on Sunday. Nothing much happened on Sunday except church. And I still hear nostalgic longing for that time from time to time. But the interesting and ironic thing to me is that when I have talked with my mother and I have talked with other people of her generation who remember that era, most of them do not have positive or fond memories of it. Those imposed Sabbaths were not gifts to them. They were boring. My mom says she wasn't allowed to do much of anything because just about anything could be construed as work. And if something was fun, well, (laughs) then it must not be holy or proper. That's not gift. That's the Pharisaic fallacy of thinking that humanity is made for the Sabbath rather than the Sabbath is made for humanity. Sabbath rest is something we should look forward to. Yes, we're instructed to keep it holy, and worship of God is certainly part of that. But I also think keeping the Sabbath holy means treasuring it and making sure that we take the time for that rest, to set that time apart, to hold it as sacred, not optional, not just as a perk for a few, because it's not an instruction just for us. It's not just for the insiders. Keeping the Sabbath holy means ensuring everyone, young, old, rich, poor, male, female, those at the top, those at the bottom, everyone has a chance to rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light, says Jesus. But it's still a yoke, a yoke to God, a yoke to the ways of heaven, a yoke to one another as the church, as the body of Christ. We should do it because we've been instructed by our God to do it. But we should also do it because it's good for us and because it brings joy to our lives. It helps us to feel better and be better. I'm sure we could spend a long time listing all the benefits of taking the time to rest. I just want to highlight just a few The major benefit of taking that Sabbath rest, that time apart, getting that quality rest to take a break, to breathe, is rejuvenation. Rest is restorative. It helps all the systems of our bodies to do what they need to do to be well. And not just our bodies, but our minds. Remember last week, this is what we heard from the Apostle Paul. Be transformed by the renewal of your minds. All the busyness that we live with and live in, this go, 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 go mentality, it robs us of time to focus and think, to process, to really ponder, to consider what's going on, to weigh evidence to think through implications. We're just so busy trying to keep up with things. George Bernard Shaw once quipped, few people think more than two or three times a year. I've made an international reputation for myself by thinking once or twice a week. But to really think, to really ponder We have to sit, we have to rest. Can't just be go, 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 going all the time. A second benefit is sight. 
Sabbath helps restore sight to the blind. Speed is one of the chief values of our day and our time, our economy of convenience. How much can we get, how much can we do, and how fast? But when we're overly busy, we're, we're sort of going to autopilot. We're just moving from A to B to C just to get things done. And so very often, we're really not present. We're just passing through, we're passing by. And we live that way because we've been taught that the busier we are, the more important we are. Look at all the things that I'm doing. But we also miss a lot of our life. We also miss a lot of things in our life, around us in the world, in our rushing and our dashing. A few years ago, I had to take my car into the shop for some work, and I dropped it off in the morning, and then I took the bus into the church that I was serving at the time. And somehow I found my way back home that afternoon. And when I got the call that my car was ready to pick up, I decided that instead of asking Kristen to drive me or getting back on the bus, that I would walk the two to three miles to the mechanic. It was a beautiful sunny day. I needed the exercise. I must have thought I had the time. And so I decided to walk. And I set out along the route that I would normally drive because that's how I knew how to go. And I was only a few minutes into the walk when I realized how much I was seeing that I had never seen before. Because every other time I had gone that way, I had been in my car and I had just been flying. I had some place to go and that was my focus. I saw houses, I saw streets, I saw people. I even saw some businesses I hadn't noticed were there before. Things I had driven by who knows how many times, but I had never really noticed, not really. So we need that time. We need to slow down. We need to rest in order to see. And the third benefit is that Sabbath rest, this time apart, gives us perspective. Again, the busier we are, the more important we think we are. That's how our society trains us to think. Look at all the things that I am doing. See, I am needed. I am essential. But rabbis teach that part of Sabbath observance is a rehearsal for our own death. Because the time is going to come when none of us are going to be here anymore. And when that time comes, someone else is going to have to do all those things that we think nobody else can do. All those things that other people may think, we're the only person who can do that. The time is going to come when somebody else is going to have to do it. And so... Taking the time to rest, taking the time to observe Sabbath, to take ourselves out of the flow, out of the picture for a bit, out of the equation, when we do that, one of the things we discover is life goes on. The world keeps turning. Everything is still there the next day. That doesn't mean we think less of ourselves, that we don't matter. We do. It's just a reminder, a needed reminder, that we are creatures. We are not the creator. God is God, and we are not. And the earth creation depends on God, not on us in that fundamental way. And that reminder, that recognition, that perspective allows us to turn our worship to God and away from ourselves. So what does Sabbath rest, what does that look like in the church for the church? Well, it looks like worship. It looks like worshiping God as our Creator, our Sustainer, our Lord and Savior, the One, capital O, whom we cannot do without, who we would not be without. 
At the beginning of our service, we did our call to worship from Psalm 92, which states that it is a song for the Sabbath day. And what is it full of? It's full of praises, praises of God, praises of God for God's work, praises for a God who also took the time to rest and observe the Sabbath. And a declaration of longevity, of long life, vital life, not just years, but people who remain green and are still fruitful when they are old, those who follow God's ways, including the command to rest. And science, as we have heard, is starting to back that up. Sabbath in the church looks like prayer, not prayer as a petition, not just as a list of things we desire that we struggle with that we offer to God, but reflective prayer, contemplative prayer, prayer that is entering into and resting in the presence of God. Be still and know that I am God, says the Lord. Be still. And that's not how a lot of us have been taught to pray, but it's an important aspect of prayer. And if you want to learn more about that, in March, when we enter into Lent, when we reorganize how we're spending our time together on Sunday mornings to enter into discussion and presence with each other, Doug Schmidt and Ellen Perry are each going to be leading a group to learn about the practice of prayer in this more reflective and contemplative way. Thirdly, Sabbath in the church looks like play. It looks like potlucks and coffee time. It looks like talent nights and fun nights. We shouldn't see the events that we plan within our church life on our church calendar, the times we get together to play as somehow optional or lesser than the more serious times of study and service. We need those times too, but we also need to just be together, to get to know each other, to share the table, to share laughter, to talk, to get to know each other to enjoy the abundance of this world that God has created and that we are all a part of, to walk with each other. That's as important for building up our body as those more serious times. Quality rest is vitally important to our health and our well-being as individuals and as the church. In fact, if there's one thing that we could do, just one, we might want to consider choosing this one. But however we prioritize it, we should prioritize it individually and corporately. We should hear again clearly today Jesus' call, come unto me and I will give you rest because you deserve it, because you are worth it, because God loves you and because you need it to be healthy, to be all that God has created you to be. And so may we have the faith, the courage, the humility, whatever it takes to hear Christ's offer and not only to accept his invitation, but to work to extend that invitation to others. Thanks be to God. Amen.